Hello YouTube and welcome back to Dare to Game. Today we're playing Medieval Dynasty and we're doing another guide video. We're going to be showing you uh, the best talents for each skill. So we're here in my uh, my little hometown, my little humble abode, as it were, and uh, we're just going to show you what's going on. So we're just going to start and go through each one and I'm going to have a few things to say about each one and I'll explain why you know, one skill's better than another, all that sort of stuff, or at least objectively. Some of them are going to be subjective and they're going to depend. Uh, so a good example of that would be here, you got Woodcutter or Miner. I think Miner is objectively going to be a better perk because A, you're going to use it more because you need iron and it's one of the only ways to get it and Woodcutting doesn't take that long to start with and you get a whole bunch of it. Uh, so it's better to speed up mining than it is Woodcutting. That's like an objective one in my opinion. Um... But it, it depends entirely on your playstyle for some stuff. So let's just get started with it. So the basic premise behind the talent system is you get 10 points as you level up. Like you have to earn them. But as you level up, you'll get 10 points and it maxes out at 10. So there's only 10 that you can put into something. And you need to have at least one in each tier to unlock the next tier. And so you can't just, you know, get all to pop them all into the bottom four because that's not how it works. You have to put at least one in tier one, at least one in tier two, all that sort of stuff. So with that in mind, the most valuable skills, in my opinion, now mind you, you're not going to be able to max out every one of these because of the way that the system works, but the most valuable skills in extraction are uh, minor. Like I said, that's out of the tier one. That's the one that I think is the most valuable. Uh, which is going to give you that faster mining or digging. So once you get that up to level 3, it's 100% faster. It really speeds it up. Uh, the next most important one that I think of is Iron Seeker, because it's going to be giving you more iron when you're mining. So when you get to a mine and you're mining the rock deposits, you're going to see salt, stone, and iron. You level up Iron Seeker all the way to level 3, and you get a 30% bigger chance to find iron when mining, which is going to increase the amount of iron you take out by quite a bit. And given that iron is one of the more scarce resources, or at least time-consuming to get, it's definitely good to speed that up, if at all possible. Another one is Mule. This is just going to be generally valuable, because you're going to get that 5 kilogram boost to your inventory limit. And I really, you know, any, any perk in a game that gives me more carry weight is one that I'm going to be all over. Then, of course, Excavation Master is, in, is super important. That one's going to give you uh, less stamina consumption for all of your extraction activities. So that's definitely going to be just an overall great one to get. Uh, these ones down here are more, uh, they're again going to speed you up. So they're definitely good if you're trying to really just make it fast. So if you went for Miner up here and you do this up there, it'll stack. So it's fun that way. Some of the caveats for this. Now, obviously, I'd love to be able to three, put three points in Excavation Master, uh, one in Mule, three in Iron Seeker, and three in Miner, I guess. Uh, but we can't do that because we need some Tier 2 to unlock those Tier 3s. So one with the Earth is the uh, where I like to go out of the Tier 2 because you have Force of Nature, which makes your axes you know, more durable or slows down their durability loss. And this one does pickaxes for shovels. So again, I went with the whole mining is going to be more important than woodcutting and it's going to take longer and you have to be farther away. So I'd rather not have to carry additional pickaxes with me. So that's the one I go with to unlock it there. So that's extraction in a nutshell. It's going to, extraction is going to really dominate a decent portion of the game considering building is kind of the main function of the game. So yeah, that is basically the best way to go for talents in extraction. Hunting is its own sort of breed of thing. <laughs> now, uh, I don't have hunting maxed out in this playthrough yet. I am a level seven in it. Uh, so, you know, it, that one seems to level up pretty slow. I think you get like one point for killing almost any animal. So it takes quite some time to level it up. But with that in mind, the most useful skills in this one are going to be tracker, which basically that one just makes it so when you do inspector mode, which is when you press the left alt key, uh, it'll kind of like dim the screen and highlight things and so tracker is going to make animals appear in that mode so it's e just easier to pick them out of the woods so like hostile animals will be red and domestic animals will be blue and deer and foxes and stuff that's going to run away your prey type animals they're going to be green so it's it's just going to highlight them and make them much easier to see on the map when you're trying to kill them another really good one is experienced hunter this is going to be one that's going to slow down your melee and ranged weapon durability loss uh, weapons degraded a decent pace in the game and some of the higher end stuff is actually really expensive so like your crossbow and stuff like that so slowing down the rate at which they degrade is going to be 
a very, very useful thing. As far as another tier three that I think is pretty dang useful, Trapping Master. It depends how much you trap. I don't trap much, but if you do, this is going to increase your trap limit and make it, you know, it gives you one on the first one, two on the second one, three on the third one. It's going to make it so you can put a lot more traps out. Uh, so when it comes down to between those two, I'll take Experienced Hunter every time. Bottomless Bag doesn't do it for me. The quiver size is not that big of a deal. 50 arrows is a lot of quivers to be able to have locked and loaded ready at once. Uh, and you can carry way more than that with you. And it's just a, a, a simple thing of going into your inventory and equipping more. So that's kind of a stupid one to waste points on. These two down at the bottom are both very good. So strong arm is going to lower your stamina consumption when you're aiming uh, your weapon. And so if you need a couple extra seconds to take your shot, you want to really get in, in your sight picture or like you're drawing it before you go up because it's a vicent and you don't want it to maul you to death. That one's going to make it so you can do that for longer. So strong arm's important. Lock and load is even more important because this one is going to really speed up uh, your reloading. So whether that's with a bow just pulling back the next shot or loading your crossbow, this is going to make that faster. And a 30% boost to that is huge. The crossbow takes a really long time to reload. So having it that go 30% faster really eliminates the biggest downfall of the crossbow. Um, with all that in mind, you do unfortunately need to get something in tier one to unlock it all. Steady hand would probably be very good, but since it's a work in progress, I've, I haven't noticed any sort of a difference that it makes when you click on it. So I'm just saying don't waste points on it for now. So I did archer. So it gives you, uh, you're more likely to be able to recover your arrows and bolts. It's, it's a useful perk early in the game. Late in the game, I've got so many arrows and bolts, I don't even know what to do with them. So it's not a super useful one. So yeah, that's hunting. Let's move on. As far as farming goes, this one is uh, going to be real dependent on how you're farming in, you know, in the game. The most useful ones that I've picked out from it are as follows. I like Careful Farmer because it's going to make sure that your cop, uh, crop cultivation tools don't uh, degrade as quickly because they degrade really fast, like by default. Your scythe, your hose, and your... Uh, your bag for like sowing seeds degrade really fast. Uh, so I like having that because it's going to slow that down. So you're spending less time making tools or gathering resources to do it or whatever and more time farming. Uh, counting sheep, I don't find to be that useful just because sheep shearing doesn't take that long and you normally don't have that many sheep to shear anyway. That's kind of a stupid perk. So then you have these two perks here are going to reduce the amount of seeds that you need uh, to plant things. The vegetarian is going to be vegetables, catcher in the oats is going to be all your different grains. And now the reason I have one point in vegetarian, I don't think that's a very useful skill, but I needed a tier two one and counting sheep is useless. So I put one in vegetarian. Out of those two, catcher in the oat makes way more sense. With vegetarian, you just want more seeds to plant your vegetables. The seed itself isn't the grain. With uh, this one, you have to thrash your grain on the floor and then you get uh, like rye grain and you can either replant the rye grain or make it into flour So you definitely want to use less of it to sow so you can make more into flour It's kind of a no-brainer with the vegetables Basically, I mean I just keep enough to replant my fields and then I sell the rest of the seeds So yeah, you make a profit, but it's not that much because you're only reducing it by so much It, it doesn't equate to that much. So catcher in the oats definitely a better one there Milky Way, I actually don't do a lot of milking uh, anything? I, I haven't found anything in the game that I think you need milk for. So maybe it'll be something that's implemented later. Knight Rider, it says unlocks the ability to ride horses. At the moment, that uh, it says mechanics not yet available. I'm assuming it has something to do with the fact that there are no horses in the game at the moment. So when horses are added to the game, this is definitely probably going to be one of those ones that, yeah, it's a no-brainer because the ability to ride horses is huge. For now, don't waste a point on it. Uh, and then you have less stamina for shearing and milking or less stamina for plowing and harvesting. Again, for me, it's a no-brainer, plowing and harvesting. You make big fields, you do that a lot more. Max you can do for shearing and milking is like, I don't know, a half dozen cows and a half dozen sheep or goats or whatever. So it doesn't make any sense to waste points on making that take less stamina when you're going to spend way more time plowing and harvesting. So that's kind of the way that goes. Again, with this one, like I said, vegetarian, not one that I would normally waste a point on, but out of these tier two, it's the better one. So I need it to get to tier three and then tier four. That's farming. Let's move on. Diplomacy at the moment is pretty limited, but you know, the ones that are there are probably the most important ones anyway. Uh, so you can see I have one in diplomacy knowledge. Uh, Part of that is because I'm still trying to level it up. It does speed it up a little bit. You you do more quickly get 
skill points by doing the knowledge ones. Uh, so while I'm leveling up, I like to do that. But anyway, uh, for all the ones that are implemented, you can see there are three currently, frequent buyer, good host, and seller. And honestly, they're probably the three most valuable out of all of these. Now, mind you, each one of these is important because talking to people is kind of important in this game. Diplomat is supposed to give you more di dynasty reputation for challenges. Challenges aren't in the game yet, so I'm assuming that'll come out when challenges become part of the game. Romeo, win the heart quests, uh, also not in the game yet, so not something that I, I would waste my points on. Grifter, that one seems interesting. I hope that gets added in quickly because I'm assuming it means you can like give people gifts to improve your reputation with them. I think that would be useful, especially late game when you've got lots of money, but you don't want to sit there talking about how nice the weather is. Frequent buy is super important. Uh, gives you lower buying prices, 15% lower, so that's great. Uh, definitely one of the most important. Good host gives you plus 15 additional mood for each inhabitant. Uh, makes it much easier to manage your village because your people are going to be much happier. Um, so definitely a very, very important one there. And then seller is going to give you 5, 10, and then 15% higher selling prices. So if I'm distributing uh, talent points in here, I'm going to be putting, I mean, hard to say what you do for tier one here once you get to level 10 because you don't need it in knowledge anymore. So I don't know. I'd probably put it in Romeo once that's in the game. Uh, but then I put three in frequent buyer, three in good host, three in seller. And you've got your, your best skills there for diplomacy. Survival's what comes next, and it's actually the first one I think I maxed out in this game. So this one is going to be another one of those ones where it's got a lot of really good perks later on. But unfortunately, because of the tier system, you got to use skill points to get there. So what we're looking at here, the most valuable skills out of this I have are Survival Sense, Strong as an Oak, Survivalist, and solid as a rock. And now my reasoning for that is, uh, I'll go through them each one at a time. Iron liver is okay, I guess, but I've gotten to the point, I mean, it took me like an hour in the game, or maybe two, to figure out what not to eat to get poisoned. So I don't get poisoned, so that one's not very good. And if you do, you just carry around some St. John's wort and you unpoison yourself, so I don't like wasting them on that. This one's not in the game yet, so I don't even pay attention to it. Survival Sense is good because it highlights your uh, mushrooms and feathers and St. John's Wort, Broadleaf Plantain, all that stuff on the map when you go into your focus mode or inspector mode, which is going to be your left alt key. Uh, makes it much easier to gather stuff, so I definitely like that one. Strong as an Oak gives you more health, which is super important in this game. It's going to make everything more durable, basically. You're just going to be alive much longer. Uh, so Strong as an Oak is definitely a good way to go. Survivalist, again, it's going to, this one's super important. It's going to slow down how often you need to eat or drink. And considering that's pretty often in this game, that one is, again, super useful. I don't find fishermen to be super useful. Of course, I don't fish much. If it's if fishing is what you're going to want to do to get your main protein source, then I guess this one's going to be a good one. But I prefer to hunt for it and get meat, so I don't do fishermen. Water answer, it says work in progress, so I don't even know if it works right now. I assume that one is one that you'd probably tie with fishermen if you're going to be doing that a lot. Uh, but it also says work in progress, so I don't waste points on that. Athlete is one that I consider pretty important, but not more important than Solid as a Rock, because this one is going to give you slower stamina consumption, so you're going to be able to run for longer. Whereas Solid as a Rock makes you take less damage, and by the end of it, you take 30% less damage. And if you've been mauled by as many boars, or chewed on by wolves, or again mauled by Vicent, as much as I have, Solid as a Rock is definitely a really good perk. So yeah, that is Survival. Let's move on. Crafting is another one that has a lot of stuff that says work in progress. Basically everything. Uh, in fact, it is everything. So uh, right now these are just suggestions based on what they say. Obviously, I don't think any of these work right now. Uh, I haven't noticed tangible differences from them, but I did pick out the ones that I think would be the most useful just because of how they work or how they're supposed to work. Handyman seems like it'll be a good one because it says upgrading and downgrading of house modules. Not in the game yet. It seems like you have to like destroy and then rebuild to do most stuff in this game. But when that gets in the game, I think that'll be useful. It's going to save lots of resources. Blacksmith, 30% uh, faster crafting iron objects. Crafting iron objects is the slowest thing in the game. So I definitely would put points into that. Before building, when they get implemented, I would say handyman, blacksmith, and baker. And then maybe building master. But that, that would be what I'd focus on. Again, that's because these are all just to speed things up. And so the ones that take the longest are baking and blacksmithing. So uh, that is where crafting skills, what I consider to be the most useful for those ones. So that is all the talents.
that's all we have for today. So if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions, or opinions, I invite you to leave that in the comment section down below. That's all for today, so we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.